In this movie, we're going to look at how we can process an image like this to have a little more uh, punch and also to kind of have a bit of an HDR feel to it inside of Lightroom. Now, if you're using uh, Adobe Photoshop CS6, you can do this same thing in Camera Raw. The controls are identical. And if you're using Adobe Photoshop Elements 11, a lot of what I'm going to do here, you can actually do in the Camera Raw there as well. So I'm going to start here with lens correction. This is just something I'm going to routinely do on pretty much all of my images. I'm going to go to the color section of lens correction and click remove chromatic aberration. This is especially important on things like this tree because we've got a lot of fine detail and it's getting close to the edge of the frame. So uh, we might get some chromatic aberration that's like color fringing on the edges of these branches because it's a fairly high contrast area. I'm going to go to profile. I'm going to enable uh, profile corrections. So it's going to go through the database of uh, lenses that it knows about and it's going to look for my lens and it's going to try and apply a corrective profile for that to get rid of uh, distortion and vignetting from the lens. Now that I've got that taken care of I'm going to come down to the basic panel here. Now I want to turn on this um, thing right here. This is my shadow warning, shadow clipping warning and my highlight clipping warning. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my black and white points. So if you're in Lightroom 4 or in, uh, you know, let's see, Photoshop CS6, you move them left to darken them and right to, to brighten them. So I'm going to take my blacks and I'm going to start moving that down. And if you notice, I start getting blue patches. That's where everything has gone completely black. So I want to back that off until I get, you know, little patches, but not very big. So those areas have gone completely to shadow. Next, I'm going to set the white point. So I'm going to grab the white slider and I'm going to move that until things start to turn red. And that means that that's gone completely white. Now, I actually don't like my diffuse highlights to be completely white. So I'm going to back it off. So now I've, uh, I don't have any whites, but I'm going to keep going a little bit further just to give my whites a little more headroom. All right, now that I've set my black and white point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my highlights down to 100%. I'm going to move my shadows up to 100%. Now, because I'm shooting, a, this is a, a raw file, what I'm doing is I'm actually teasing out more detail that would have been in the raw file, but if I shot JPEG, it just would have gone away. You can do this to a JPEG, but you're going to get a lot of noise doing it. So what I've done is my camera originally captured 14 bits of data and the JPEG would only display eight. So I'm bringing out some of that information, but the uh, picture may start to look a little bit flat. So I'm going to increase the contrast just to give it a little bit of extra punch. The other thing I'm going to do, maybe dial that back. I'm going to increase the clarity. Now, if things start looking really grungy, that's not what I'm going for here. So you know, if I push this all the way up to 100, eh, it doesn't look terrible, but I I'm generally try to be a little less heavy handed than that. So I'm going to maybe in this case push up to 50, which is a lot higher than I would go most of the time. Um, overall, I think that uh, the saturation and everything's look, looking pretty good. The sky's maybe getting a little close to, to too saturated, especially if I was going to print this, that probably wouldn't print very well. So I'll be mindful of that as, as I go. Uh, the tone curve, I've got the contrast that I need, so I'm just going to skip that. I'm going to come down to my HSL grayscale panel. And I think I'm going to go to luminance, grab the targeted adjustment tool, and actually darken down that sky a little bit. Now, as I do that, the sort of level of saturation increases. So I'm going to grab the saturation and also just desaturate that by a bit. There we are. Next thing I'm going to come down and I am going to do split toning. Now, this is typically something that you use just for black and whites, but eh, I use this fairly subtly sometimes. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the highlights a little bit warmer and the shadows a little bit cooler, and that's going to simulate a warm sun because when you look at, say, a sunrise or sunset uh, picture, what ends up happening is 
is the areas that the sun is shining on are warm by the, the warm color light, but the areas of the shadows are actually cool by comparison because they don't have that warm light on them. So that's why you can't just you know, increase the white balance on an image just to warm the whole thing up and have, have it look the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my Alt key on the Mac or Option key, sorry, other way around, <laughs> Option key on the Mac or Alt key on the PC, and I'm going to make the highlights sort of a reddy orange, about the color of Sunrise Sun. I'm going to increase the saturation just a bit. And actually, I'm going to increase it a lot right now. I'm going to move the balance so until I see that it's just really only sort of in the highlights, those areas that are being hit by direct sun. All right, and then I'm going to reduce the saturation. Then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to hold down the option or alt so that when I move this hue slider, I can see what color I'm dialing in. And I'm going to dial in sort of a blue color. Well, I like that. And then we'll just increase that just a little bit. So here's the before and after on the split tone. You may like it, you may not, I don't know. All right, gonna go to detail. And for the most part, I'm gonna leave detail, or I'm gonna leave sharpening um, for output. So I will sharpen when I actually, you know, if I wanna print that's eight by 10, for instance, I'll create a copy of this as eight by 10 and sharpen that because you can always sharpen best when you sharpen for the specific medium that you're sharpening for and also for the size. Uh, I'm going to check and see if I need any noise reduction. I might add just a little because I teased a lot of detail out of those shadows, but it really, I shot it at 100 ISO, so I'm not too worried. Lens correction we've already done. Effects. I can try a little bit of a, uh, a vignette. I don't like a really heavy-handed vignette like this. Oh, I'm going to turn these shadow and highlight warnings off. But if you have to do a heavy vignette, what you can do is bring the midpoint in a little bit further and the feather out a little further and you can get away with doing more of the vignette before it starts to call attention to itself. I'm going to be fairly, I'm going to give it a fairly light touch right here and just do that. Now the one, one more thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to the, the uh, brush tool and I'm going to start here just with a uh, exposure all the way down just so I can see what I'm doing and a fairly big brush and I'm just going to paint the whole thing in. Because the tree is not right at the middle of the picture, I can't just use a vignette to highlight it. So what I'm going to do, I can't really see anything, so I'm just going to back that off a little bit. Now I'm going to hold my Option or Alt key, and I'm going to get the eraser. So I want it with a maximum feather, and I want it to be really big. And so there's my subject, and I'm just going to erase like that. Maybe hit it one more time. There we go. Now I can back this off. Just like that. And there we are. It's sort of added. There's before, there's after. So I'm basically brightening that tree by comparison to everything else. And that's sort of pulling your eye in. And then one more thing. I'm going to grab the graduated filter here. I'm going to bring that down here. Actually, I think I'm not going to make it fade over that whole area. There we are. I'm going to give it a fairly, um, it's a fairly big feather there. But I actually don't really want to change the exposure there. Or if I do, I just want to change it minimally. What I want to see is what happens if I add some clarity. So I'm going to add some more clarity. It doesn't have a lot of effect. It actually just has more effect on the branches of that tree. But there we go. I'm going to hit. Oop. Done. And that's where we started. And that's what we've got. Before and after. Before and after. And that's how I would post-process this image.